Crystal sets are often mentioned as beginner's radio projects. It's true they don't have very many parts in them, but there's quite a few reasons why the crystal set that you build doesn't work first time. First of all, and I think it's obvious, but I'm going to say it anyway, there has to be a suitable AM broadcast station in your area. Here in Australia and in the US, there's still lots of AM broadcast stations around, but in Europe, there's many, many fewer than there used to be. So before you start building a crystal set, check to see if there's an AM station in your area. Generally speaking, if there's a station within about 50 kilometers and it's medium to high power, let's say 10 to 50 kilowatts, you should be able to hear that on a crystal set without amplification. But if the nearest station is much further away from that, or if it's only a very low power station, then maybe you'll be struggling with a crystal set. So just get your expectations right first of all. Check the number of stations on AM that are reasonably close to you. And with any luck, there'll be at least a few and you'll be able to start building a crystal set with a reasonable chance of it being successful. Secondly, you really need an external antenna, even if you're quite close to a station. Whereas an FM radio, transistor FM radio, has a telescopic whip, an AM radio will normally have a ferrite rod. With a crystal set, all the power to drive your headphones or even speaker comes from the broadcasting station. And for that, the bigger the antenna you can have, the better the performance you'll get from your crystal set. I would suggest a wire antenna anywhere between about 20 meters and 40 or 50 meters long, even if you have to have it going up around in different directions to fit on your property, the higher and longer, the better for a crystal set radio antenna. If you can have a large part vertical, then that's good because AM broadcast stations are typically vertically polarized. That will pick up most signals coming off the ground wave propagation. But yeah, as much wire as you can, and that will work with a crystal set. There are certain types of crystal set that you don't need an external antenna for. They generally have a multi-turn frame type antenna, but I won't talk about those today. As long and as high as possible will give you the best possible results with a crystal set for an antenna. Thirdly, an antenna itself might give you reception of some signals, but really for best performance and loudness, you also need an earth. That could be a cold water tap, if you've got suitable plumbing. Uh, people say safety, if you've got gas, don't use gas connection, only use a cold water tap. Alternatively, if you're outside, you could put in a stake in the ground, a metal stake. Maybe there's a cold water tap you could connect to, possibly even some radial spreading underneath the ground connected to your stake. But Spend some time on your earth and that will really reward you in the results you get with a crystal set. Not only in the loudness of stations you receive, but also the number. So, yet yeah, point three, your crystal set must have an earth to operate. Otherwise, the performance will be quite disappointing. Four, uh, you also need a circuit with a tuning capacitor. There are some types of crystal set circuits that are very simple. They might have just an inductor, a diode and headphones. And yes, you might be able to pick up a station with it, but the selectivity won't be very good. Even if there's a slider uh, sliding over the taps of the coil, um, without any sort of capacitor, your selectivity will be very poor and your sensitivity probably won't be very good either. So. Yeah, definitely go for a circuit that has a parallel tuned circuit with a capacitor, normally a variable capacitor, in parallel with the inductor. And that will help you select your stations. Now, there are some crystal set circuits where you have a variable inductor 
and a fixed capacitor, that's okay, provided you can cover the whole of the AM broadcast band. If you can't, you might need to switch in different uh, capacitor values to cover the whole band. And that, that brings us to our next point, especially if you are in an area where if your local station is down to the bottom end of the band, like below 600 kilohertz or the top end above 1500, make sure that your crystal set covers all those ranges properly. Otherwise, you might have done everything right. You might have the antenna right. You might be near enough to a station. You might have a good earth. But if your tuning doesn't cover the uh, frequency of your local station, you might not even know that it's there. Um, make sure you've got the tuning range correct. If you think that there might be a station at a lower frequency that you can't quite reach down towards, put in a capacitor of maybe 100 picofarad, maybe 220 picofarad in parallel with your variable capacitor that will drop the frequency down. Or if you've got a type of coil where you've round turns on it, then yeah, add a few more turns, add maybe 10 or 20 more turns, and that will get you lower down in the frequency range. Or if you know that there's a station at the top end of the band above 1500, then maybe take a few turns off. If you can, um, with a variable capacitor, try and reduce its minimum capacitance. I'll give you a tip. Some of the types of variable capacitors, the little ones about two centimeters square, like you see in transistor radios, Often they have on the back trimmer capacitors, the little capacitors that just adjust um, fine adjustments. If you set them so that they, the plates, you use a little screwdriver, the plates are not overlapping, that is the minimum amount of capacitance, and that is good for covering the top end of the broadcast band. It's sometimes hard to work out the settings of those, but if you've got, say, a, a versatile multimeter or standalone capacitance meter, then you can use those to uh, get the lowest possible capacitance. And while I'm talking about variable capacitors, um, you'll notice that there are several prongs on most variable capacitors. Uh, you're normally only going to be using two, and a lot of the cheaper capacitors, they basically often have two capacitors built in, two variable capacitors. It's called a gang arrangement where uh, you have a lower value capacitor. One might go from say 10 to 60 picofarad, the other might go from 10 to 160 picofarad. And with a crystal set you're normally going to be using the larger one, the 10 to 160 picofarad. That should allow you to cover all of the broadcast band. If you wanted to cover a little bit lower frequencies down, like I mentioned before, then maybe have the two in parallel. Um, generally speaking, when you're looking at the case of it, often the middle connection is the ground. That's common to both halves of the variable capacitor. Um, again, try and use a meter, the capacitance meter that shows you, indicates maximum capacitance, and then you'll get the correct one. Use the larger capacitor if you've got a variable capacitor that has multiple sections. Some might only have two sections, others have more, particularly if it's an AM, FM, multiband radio, and you're using a salvaged variable capacitor. If you don't do that, then you might not cover the full range of the AM broadcast band. Another point, diode tapping and on the coil, and also antenna tapping on the coil. Now, with some crystal sets, they have a, especially ones you make yourself, they have a coil wire, and they might have 60 or 80 turns for the main tuning coil, might be about this big in diameter, and after every 10 or 15 turns, you often have a tap. That's good construction practice. If you have a tap, which is just a bit of wire that's just sort of brought up and bent around and you strip a bit of the insulation off, whether it be enameled cover or plastic, doesn't matter. Strip that off, tin it with solder, soldering iron, and then you can use an alligator clip to clip onto that tap. You'd have alligator clips coming from the diode, the detector diode, or the antenna. And the benefit of that is that you can adjust the position of the taps for optimum signal levels or selectivity. Often it's a trade-off. You might be at a point where you can hear all the stations across the band, 
but not be able to separate them, but they might be quite loud. You might have to tap down the coil towards the earth part of the winding, and then you might be able to separate the stations a bit better. Um, so yeah, having a coil like that gives you optimum performance for a crystal set. Now there are some types of crystal set, um, like certain kits, the cheaper kits, where the coil is pre-wound, and they don't allow you the tapping and that will reduce the performance and you see circuits where you've got the uh, top end of the coil is connected not only to the variable capacitor which is as it should be but also to the antenna and the detector diode and maybe if you're near a station and you can get away with a short antenna maybe that's okay maybe you can separate stations with that but otherwise that is a bad arrangement you ideally want the flexibility to either uh, tap the diode and antenna down the coil to get selectivity or another option and some coils have a second winding you could use that as a primary winding so you have one part of that connected to ground the other part connected to your antenna and that might give you a bit better selectivity or you might even do that with the diode part of the circuit a lot of crystal set building is experimenting, working out the best tapping positions, the best coil arrangements for your particular area. And it will vary depending on how strong your signals are, what type of antenna you're using. If you're in a big city with a lot of stations or in a country town with only one or two. So um, the tappings of the coil is very, very important. And while I'm talking about the inductor, if you've got a pre-made inductor that does have those two coil windings on them then it's really important to get it right you can use a multimeter to on a low ohm setting to test for continuity um, because one coil will not be making contact with the other coil at least if it's done right if there's a case where one coil is making contact electrical contact with the other then you've got a problem maybe there's a problem with the enamel insulation maybe there's something touching if that's the case then make another coil and have it so that the windings are electrically insulated from one another but overall with a multimeter on a low resistance setting you want the larger coil to be connected to the variable capacitor as that's the one that's resonant over the tuning capacitor range and a smaller coil if you're using it at all and you might not be using it at all um, you might instead just be having taps on the larger coil, but if you are using the smaller coil, then try that for the antenna connection or maybe the dive connections or maybe even both. But don't have the smaller coil on the variable capacitor unless you're doing an experiment like trying to receive higher frequencies. You probably won't hear stations, you know, at say two or three megahertz, um, but you, you might be able to cover the top end of the AM broadcast band with the smaller coil. But Overall, make sure you, you get your coils connected right, um, and, you, and a multimeter or ohm meter can really help with that. Um, the correct diode to use is a germanium diode. There are, you know, the most common type of diode is a silicon diode that is not particularly good for crystal sets, particularly if signals are weak. Um, a germanium diode is the best type of diode. The older types are often uh, a bit larger than the silicon diodes often clear glass with two bands at the end. It doesn't matter what direction the diode is put in the circuit, but it's better if it's a germanium diode. There may be cases where diodes that are sold as germanium diodes, like on eBay, might actually be silicon diodes. So it's probably a good idea to be getting diodes from different sources and just be doing some experiments and working out which one's the best. Um, but try and get a germanium diode, especially a reliable one, like from an old transistor radio, that will have probably a germanium diode if it's the older type. And as I said before, it doesn't matter which way you put it in the circuit. Now, once you've got success later on with a germanium diode, you can use other ways to detect the signal. Um, some people use field effect transistors. Um, there's even a case where you can use an electric microphone. I've done a video of this and it worked quite well. And that's because the electric microphone had a field effect transistor built in and that worked as the detector. Those who are into older type of um, radio might be able to use 
an old style Galena detector where you've got this cat's whisker and you're trying to get the right connection just on a sensitive point of the Galena and then be detecting signals. But overall that requires more fiddling around and you're better off to get the crystal set working first of all with a germanium diode and then later on you can experiment with other detectors. Um, another thing is that's really critical is your headphones or earphones. Now the most common type of earphones that you get like for a mobile phone or Walkman, iPod, whatever, they are typically low impedance like they might be 8 to 32 ohm. Unless you're very lucky, they are not so good on a crystal set. Instead, you want high impedance. Here's an example, high impedance headphones. Uh, if you go to a ham fest or antique radio sale, you might be able to find them. Provided that they're working, these are ideal for crystal sets. Or failing that, a crystal earpiece uh, won't be as good, but crystal earpieces often commonly used in crystal set kits. Uh, now there is an issue, some people have found that with the newer types of crystal earpieces they may not be as reliable as the older type. If that's a problem then you could connect an audio amplifier to your crystal set and that will amplify the audio and allow you to tune in stations. Then it's not quite a true faithful crystal set, it's, you are still using a battery to provide some power. But overall if you can get an old style set of headphones or a working crystal earpiece then that is both the best option for a crystal set. Another thing you can do you can improvise is with piezo transducers not piezo buzzers because they've got the buzzer circuit built in the transducer does not have the buzzer circuit built in uh, their audio quality isn't as good some of them are about this big in diameter you might be able to put them into your ear or hold them up to your ear. Uh, you might not hear the bass notes from them, but you should be able to hear stations when they're tuned in and therefore they're okay on a crystal set. That's a piezo transducer, another possible option. Another point, and this is more if you are using a crystal earpiece, and some crystal set circuits, a lot of crystal set circuits don't have this and you might connect a crystal earpiece and wonder why aren't you receiving a station and it may be because there is no DC path across the crystal earpiece. Uh, with headphones because they've got windings of wire they do have a DC path but some crystal earpieces might not and so you need to create a DC path by putting a resistor across in parallel with the crystal earpiece. As for the value not critical I'd say between about 100k and 470k ohm would be okay and that's such a high value you're not really losing any of the audio signal but if you put that across in parallel with the earpiece you've got a DC path and that will allow you to hear signals on a crystal earpiece. Another thing I suggest you do again not all crystal set circuits have this is a capacitor anywhere between 1 nanofarad and about 10 nanofarad a disc ceramic capacitor is fine. That is wired again across the earpiece or across the resistor and that shunts unwanted RF signals to ground. I have listened on crystal sets with them and I think it sometimes does make a small improvement having that capacitor there. And again, you look at circuits and even some kits and they might not have these extra parts. They might be trying to economize and what worked for them might not work for you. And there's cases where if you do add the extra shunt resistor, then it will work. So that's just a pitfall to be aware of. If you are finding that you've done everything right, you're using a crystal earpiece, you're still not hearing any stations, try a shunt resistor. And that may provide a DC path and then you can start hearing signals. Here's some circuit configurations just to recap. This one's terrible because there's no variable capacitor. You're just relying on adjusting the inductance and maybe relying on some self-capacitance. This one's a bit better because you do have a parallel tuned circuit. However, it is badly loaded because you can't vary the tapping point of the diode or the antenna on the coil. So it's unlikely to be very selective unless you've got a very short antenna. 
and that's only possible if you're right near station. So I don't recommend this at all. This one is an improvement in that there's tapping points for both the diode and the antenna so you can optimize performance. It will probably work okay with high impedance headphones but for a crystal earpiece it might not work which is where this one comes in. This is the good one. This has got the tapped coil of the one to the left and the variable capacitor and the resistor to provide a return and a parallel capacitor and your high impedance headphones or earphones. So this is the basic design I would use. I wouldn't use anything simpler than this. But if you wanted to, and I've repeated that design up here, you could vary things with the coupling of the antenna or the diode. These arrangements either use taps and or smaller coils to provide some coupling. Here you've got some inductive coupling from the antenna. Here you've got it from the diode instead. If you wanted to be really fancy, you would vary the distance between these coils so that would affect increase decrease the coupling so you can optimize reception because there might be cases where at one end of the band you've got good reception with it tightly coupled and the other end you've got better reception where it's loosely coupled so it's good to be able to swing and vary things a little bit Another point that's really important is that you are in a super quiet location, especially if you've just built a crystal set. You don't know what to expect from the stations in your area. Even the smallest amount of extraneous noise can make it hard for you when you're tuning across and trying to find your first station. And another question, of course, is can you drive a speaker from a crystal set? I'd suggest, first of all, starting with headphones or crystal earpiece but if you're getting good reception with that then yeah maybe try a speaker uh, you will need some form of impedance transformation um, a speaker transformer that goes from high impedance which you connect on the diode side to low impedance you could try uh, first of all some low impedance stereo headphones and then uh, try a speaker and I've been able to receive stations 50 kilometers away on a speaker it's been very quiet again you have to be in a very quiet room put your ear up to the speaker but yeah i've had some success with that and i've demonstrated it in previous videos uh, if you are using a speaker then don't use a speaker in free space because that will uh, won't be very efficient if you can put the speaker in some form of box even if it's a cardboard box like a milk carton possibly with a few holes um, uh, timber box or use a, a speaker in its own enclosure and even quite a big speaker they can be quite efficient so don't be afraid to use them on a crystal set but you do need a transformer to match the impedance uh, if you don't have a speaker transformer even a 1k to 8 ohm transformer like you got in some of the very older type of transistor radios that could be okay or even if you're stuck a power transformer have the low voltage end on the speaker end and the high voltage the mains end on the uh, diode end that will provide a suitable impedance step down as well so that's a few thoughts on why if after building a crystal set you haven't had success uh, try some of these hints I've given and with any luck you will be able to hear stations and have all the joy of picking up stations on a radio that you built yourself and which is completely self-powered. The best thing you've got to perpetual motion is a crystal set. So start building one, put it together, and let me know how you go in the comments, and hopefully this video has been helpful in getting you to build a crystal set and having success with it. Returning to amateur radio, then have I got the book for you. Getting back into amateur radio fills you in on all the things that you've missed while you've been away from the hobby. Available in both paperback and ebook, you can find out more on my website 
vk3ye.com. That's getting back into amateur radio. Details at vk3ye.com or just search the title on Amazon.